Hello everyone and welcome to the MIC Student Experience Virtual Sessions. So in our session this morning, we'll be talking to a number of students on the Bachelor of Arts programme and they'll be representing uh, subjects such as psychology, uh, German studies and mathematics. Um, my name is Patrick Cosgrove and I'm the student recruitment officer here in the college. So if you do have any questions for our students, um, we'll be talking about their, their uh, subjects, about the Bachelor of Arts programme, and obviously, of course, about the MIC student experience as well. So if you do have any questions for them, you can use the chat function, uh, the Q&A function, type it in, and I might put it to them uh, towards the end of the session, and they might be able to answer some of your queries, maybe about student life in Mary Immaculate. So just to start off, I might just introduce to everyone. So first up is uh, Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Hi, how are you? I might just get you to introduce yourself, Valerie, if that's OK. Um, so I'm 22 and I studied psychology at MIC and I'm from Limerick, so went to college in Limerick as well. That's great, Valerie, thanks. Um, next up then is um, Luke and Luke is representing maths uh, today. Hi, how are you? Yeah, um, my name's Luke. I'm 20 years of age and I'm from Tipperary and I'm a second year BA studying Irish and maths. Thanks, Luke. And then finally, we have Scott representing German studies. Hi, everyone. So my name is Scott Fitzgerald. I'm 22. I'm from Mitchellstown in County Cork and I studied English and, of course, German. Thanks very much, Scott. So um, maybe just to start off, maybe just a general question, I might put it to you all. Maybe you might start first with Valerie. Um, Valerie, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about, um, I suppose, why you chose the Bachelor of Arts programme and uh, I suppose psychology as well. What attracted you to it uh, in the first place? And I suppose what's the most interesting thing about uh, studying psychology on the arts programme? Yeah, so I've always just kind of had a bit of an interest in psychology. I took, uh, I used to do Irish grinds when I was in sixth year and I took um, my Irish grind teachers like psychology textbooks and I was reading through them because obviously I didn't really want to study Irish and I was so interested. It was like the first time I properly got to see what, what psychology was. So I kind of knew from then because I was kind I was so unsure because, you know, psychology isn't taught in secondary school and I didn't really take a huge liking to everything. So I just thought psychology was like perfect when I read it because it's the study of like human behavior. So I was just really interested in why people act the way that they do and stuff like that. Um, so I chose the one, I chose the BA in Mary I in particular because I wasn't very sciencey. So a BSc like the one in UL wouldn't really have suited me well. And I did want to stay in Limerick. Um, and the BA in Mary I is accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland. So that means that I won't have to do like a year long master's linked in uh, to be able to do another master's in psychology, I can go straight in. So that for me was like, that's what I really wanted because I knew that I'd, I'm an academic person and I'd want to do a master's. So I didn't want to have to spend an extra year to then go into a master's. So yeah. Yeah, that's a great point about the psychology being covered by the Psychological Society of Ireland, Valerie. Um, just to continue off that, Valerie, I suppose when you were coming from secondary school and maybe picking a subject like psychology that you wouldn't have studied before, was that uh, challenging or I suppose what advice would you give to someone who's maybe starting to BA and they're thinking of a subject like psychology that they wouldn't maybe have encountered in secondary school? Um, yeah, like obviously I had a tiny bit of background information from reading textbooks, but Everything was quite basic when you get in um, to college. They do kind of start at a very foundation level, um, which was good. And of course, we had like academic writing and foundation studies in first year, which was so good. So at least I wasn't kind of drowning, not knowing how to write essays and stuff. Um, but yeah, like the lecturers were so accessible. So it was if you did have any questions, they were so easy to email or like chat at the end of a lecture if you were having any problems. But yeah, it like psychology itself um, was like MCQ. So there was question. It was just exams were just a lot of questions. So you didn't have to write essays. You just really kind of had to understand what was going on, um, which for me was perfect because I'm not someone who can really learn stuff off by heart. And psychology isn't like that. 
college usually like I did history as well and it wasn't really like that you didn't have to learn lots of stuff off in an arts degree I found. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Valerie. Yeah, that's some interesting insights there. Um, I might just pass over to Luke next. And um, Luke, you're representing mathematics today. Um, just tell us a little bit about your decision to study the Bachelor of Arts, Luke, and you know what attracted you to, to maths as a subject on the uh, on the BA. Yeah, I've always been good with numbers and I've always kind of had an interest in maths. And when I went to the open days in Mary I, the talks for maths were, all, were quite interesting and I really just was drawn to the maths part of the course. So that's kind of the main reason why I chose to do it. And then when I just did maths and leaving it as well, I was really interested in it. So I said I'd like to continue it on and hopefully do further study in it. Yeah, and I suppose just building on that, Luke, would you really want to have, have liked maths in secondary school to, to be taking the subject or, you know, if if you didn't, if you if it was just kind of one of your normal subjects, would you would it matter much, or, or would you really want to have a liking for it once you once you do it on the BA? Yeah, you you want to kind of have a liking for it, but if you weren't really great at it in school, or you might have struggled with it, maybe you they do start from the beginning when you go into the course, so it's like starting from foundation. They build you up the way they want the course to be done, so it is really all from the beginning, kind of when you go in. But you might you might want to have a little bit of background before going in. Yeah, thanks, uh, Luke. So we might move to Scott next. And uh, Scott is representing German studies today. So um, you might tell us, Scott, um, you know, were you always interested in languages and maybe German studies? And uh, I suppose, how did that influence you choosing the Bachelor of Arts at Mary Immaculate College? Yeah, exactly, Patrick. So I was I was always I always had a keen interest in secondary school and German. Um, it was it was an opportunity that I had during secondary school. Um, to take up the language and it was really fantastic. It was a fantastic opportunity going into we say college and choosing the Bachelor of Arts. It was something that I wanted to continue in third level and expand. Teaching was always something that I had a keen interest in also. So. It, I just felt that it, everything kind of matched up for me in MIC with, with the German and with English, so it was something I was really eager to to continue and expand on. What sets MIC apart from, from other colleges, I would say, perhaps is the is the four years of study. Um, usually, well, in the other courses I was looking at, there were three years, and Mary, I offered that fourth year and that off-campus and the opportunity to go on Erasmus to study abroad and to really immerse myself in the language and really hone my language skills and expand on what I had learned. So it was a really fantastic experience to be able to go abroad and I think to have that opportunity to go abroad really was something else and what sets what sets MIC apart. Yeah, thanks very much, Scott. And just um I suppose building on that then, um, if you're coming, I suppose, from secondary school and maybe your German isn't that strong or maybe you didn't take it to, to leaving cert level, like does it matter what level you are at uh, if you wanted to take the subject in first year? So like Luke was, was talking about just a few minutes prior, there's basically scope for everybody. There's, there's, there's a massive inclusion in, in the subject, so you've got you might have the first day you walk in, you might have people that have studied this, like in my own personal situation for, for five years in secondary school, but you also have people who have the opportunity to take up the subject ab initio, which is basically from scratch. So in first year, there was two classes. So you had your your standard class and then you had the ab initio class. So that was obviously a fantastic experience because you have basically two different language levels and then in second year both classes come together to form the main German class so basically there's scope for everyone and it that's a really like you just like you're not just limited by what you learn in secondary school and that's something I always say to even to family and friends is in like the possibilities are endless when you go to college because you could take up something completely different and you could end up loving it like Valerie with the psychology as well. You could take up something and you could end up 
loving it and it could be end up becoming your professional career, which is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that's some, some great points uh, there, Scott. Um, I suppose all of you, uh, Scott, you're in, you've just finished fourth year and so is Valerie and uh, Luke, I think you've just finished second year. Um, obviously, you've experience of college um, pre-COVID and obviously during COVID as well. And I suppose we're all hoping that things will get back to normality maybe uh, next September and, and students will be back on campus again. But you might just tell me a little bit maybe about, um, I suppose, that transition from secondary school to third level, uh, how you found it. You know, did you come maybe from a, a big secondary school and, and how did you find coming to college? Um, but maybe you might start off maybe with Luke first, I suppose, Luke, because you're maybe the most recent, your, your leaving cert was only a couple of years ago. You might give us your thoughts maybe on that. Yeah, I, I came from a, a small country school and to come to the city to go to college was really culture shock for a while but um, the college sports were always very good to kind of help you integrate into the college the society like in college but yeah it was difficult to begin with and it was kind of hard to make friends because it was kind of so overwhelming all the people that were there um, but the college was always very good to to help you kind of push you over the edge and bring you together there was always um, events on for making friends and yeah, it was, it was always very accommodating. Okay, so I suppose it helped make that transition a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, and what about you, Valerie? Did you come from a big secondary school or um, was it a city or a country school or how did you find it then when you came to, I suppose, came to Limerick City to the Mary Immaculate College campus? Yeah, I live like five minutes from Mary I. That's my, my home home. Um, but I did go out to school in the country, but I was really lucky in the fact that there was like seven or eight of us from my secondary school that were actually like good friends of mine. We were all going to Mary I, so I was very lucky that I already knew like my best friends were going with me. Um, but it did push me to kind of make other friends as well because I didn't know anyone when I ended up choosing psychology in second year. I was the only one out of my friend group because psychology, psychology is quite small. There's only, I think, 20 people out of probably around 100 kind of get chosen to do psychology from second year onwards. So I was kind of forced then to make new friends, which I hadn't been forced to do before. But like because the classes in Mary I are so small, it is so much easier than maybe in a university like UL where the classes might be a good bit bigger. Um, so that was a really good thing about Mary I. Yeah, would you have any advice, Valerie, for someone, you know, that's doing their Leaving Cert this year that might be starting college in the next uh, couple of months maybe how best to manage that transition from secondary school? Um, just go in with an open mind really um, when you go into your classes and do try and sit beside someone that maybe looks kind of friendly and might have the same interests as you and try and get chatting a bit because it is quite overwhelming but once you kind of give yourself that little bit of a push it is a lot easier. Yeah that, that's good advice. Um, and Scott, over to you. Um, what was your experience, Scott, um, of that transition from secondary school to, to third level? Might seem a long time ago now, four years, but give us your thoughts. Yeah, so I came from a relatively small um, school in Mitchellstown also. Um, like, it was it was definitely a daunting challenge, um, but it's one that, that I think everyone has to embrace um, to get the best out of it. And, I was just saying, as I was saying off air before we came on, I was saying that people tell you when you go to college that four years flies. They say, oh, enjoy everything. That four years will absolutely fly. And to a student or to someone coming into college when they're facing a full course ahead of them, they might be thinking, oh, God, four, four years seems a bit long. From first hand experience, and I think the guys can, can, uh, can agree that it absolutely flies. And that I think every it, every second should be enjoyed, to be honest, because it's 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 really a fantastic experience to to grow not only academically but personally. And um, I was lucky as well that I had a few friends that were coming up, are yeah, coming up to to MIC from Mitchellstown, and it was it was a great kind of support to fall back on. But at the same time, I feel that you need to put yourself out there. You need to get involved in the clubs and societies. You need to get involved if you're into sports, like I was involved in the soccer, so in MIC, and it was an amazing experience and memories, honestly, that last a lifetime. So I just feel you really need to 
to push yourself, put yourself out there and really get involved in absolutely everything as well of as well as of course in the academic side of things you have to keep up with that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, I think you made a great point there, um, Scott, about getting involved with um, clubs and societies in the college. And I suppose there's lots of different clubs and societies that cater for, you know, different interests or different sports. And, you know, there's usually a club and society a day, I think, each semester in, in, in the first couple of weeks. But obviously the soccer club made a big difference to you. Um, and I suppose, would you find it, it's a great way to make friends and a great social outlet as well, uh, Scott? Yeah, oh, 100%. 100 percent um like when i look back on my college experience that was a bit sad because i finished in mid-may and you kind of look back at everything and you look back at the experiences you've had the people you met there's distinct experiences that you that you'll always remember and definitely the soccer was one of those one of those things for me just the experience that you have the friends you make like you can't get get much more like-minded people so like you're you've an interest in sport you've an interest in soccer and you're studying the same things basically most people want to become teachers so it's really like-minded people and it really make friends for life you like it's, it's been unreal we've traveled around ireland playing soccer for for the college and representing the college and it's it first and foremost it's a massive honor to be representing the college but then again you're doing it with your friends and it's 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 just real fun and like I've made friends for life in 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 that soccer team, and it's 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 really brilliant. Yeah, I think I think very important to get involved. Um, what about you, um, Luke? Would you have found? Would you advise? I suppose prospective students to get involved with clubs, and societies. Is it is it definitely the way to go to to kind of settle in and make that transition from secondary school? Yeah, I wasn't involved in clubs and societies now myself, but I definitely heard from friends that it was really important to them to be involved, like things like Midas and other clubs and societies were always very important to, to friends of mine. I also got involved in becoming a class rep with the Students' Union, so that was kind of my outlet in college. So I definitely recommend students getting involved. It's a great way to make friends and kind of get to know people better. Uh, I, I got involved in second year. It was online, unfortunately, but people were very, yeah, kind of open and friendly over the Zoom. So hopefully we'll be able to meet those people coming up soon now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point, uh, Luke. Um, might put uh, the next question maybe to Valerie. Um, I suppose the current COVID-19 situation has affected all aspects of student life, um, uh, Valerie, but I suppose under normal circumstances, I suppose what's the best thing about uh, the Limerick campus and I suppose Limerick City from a student perspective? Um, Mary Eye is so close to the city. It's like a five minute walk. It's so handy if you do have like an hour break in between classes, you can actually go into town. Whereas, you know, if you're in a college that's further out, like it does take a good bit of time to go into the city. So we're so lucky that like we're basically in the city centre. So it's really, really good. Um, so that would have been my favourite thing about Mary Eye. Like it's also really handy as well. Like if you the city isn't too big and if you're new to it it's not that hard to find your way around now i'm not new to it but i would assume like it's not as big as somewhere like maybe cork or galway where it is that bit bigger and there's a lot more places to know and i mean if you're going out to a pub you're gonna know a lot of people there because there's not a huge amount of pubs that people could go to so you know if you were trying to make friends especially in first year and they do have they have things in like events in dolan's which would be kind of a smaller pub in limerick so like Mary I was really good for that for freshers just in first year especially really the pubs were perfect for that in Limerick City just trying to get to know people. Yeah no that's, that's yeah sounds interesting um, what you've said there Valerie. Um, maybe back to Scott again I suppose Scott you're, you're coming from Mitchellstown I suppose um, in Cork obviously was it a big uh, difference kind of moving up to Limerick then and I suppose how did you find the campus and um, Limerick City itself? So, yeah, it was definitely daunting, I would say, Patrick. Um, Limerick in general, compared to Cork, as Valerie said, is is that little bit smaller. So it was perhaps a, a little bit easier to navigate and so on. Um, with regards to the campus, I feel that compared to other colleges, Mary, I, is, or Mary Immaculate is a little bit smaller. So it's 
it's a little bit more tight knit so everyone knows everyone and even if you don't know anyone at the start it won't be too long before you you have a big network of friends and it's 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 really like that so you'd see someone walking in the hallways or and you and it, it's just it's just such a friendly atmosphere it's it's close it's tight knit everything um so i come from i come from Mitchell's town and like i've got my tight knit group of friends but i would say equally now i've got my tight knit group of friends from college and it's 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 really fantastic to to have those two two networks um and the college yeah it's 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 daunting at the start of course you you don't really know anyone you don't know anything but it, it trust me when i tell you that it won't be it won't be too long before you you start making friends and and creating networks and and so on so yeah thanks scott i think it's a great point you made about i suppose the Mary Immaculate College campus, it is, it's quite compact and yet we're only about five, ten minutes walk from Limerick City Centre. So you're very close to everything, yet, you know, the campus itself is very, uh, very, uh, very compact. And I think that's something we've gotten feedback from students over the years that it's really helped, uh, you know, settle in and, and, you know, you tend to meet people on a daily basis. Um, Mike, what to you next, Luke? We have a question here. Um, I might put it to you, Luke, seeing as, um, you're in um, second year obviously you've experienced now of college pre-covid and obviously the last year then when a lot of it went online so also yeah we might put this one to luke so um luke this person is asking how did you find online schooling in mary Immaculate college and um is there anything you wish you wish you knew i suppose beforehand i suppose pre-covid about what it was all like yeah, I'm not going to lie and say that it was easy, but it was quite, quite difficult to begin with in the first semester in 2020 that was online. But as kind of time went on, the college started to adapt and also students started to adapt to being online and we started to get used to it much, much easier and much quicker. So, um, yeah, it was, it was much, it was much easier to get easy, to get used to it. And uh, when we were in first year, we got, um, classes in computers and whatever. So that kind of really did help us to move to the online. If it wasn't for that, some people definitely would have struggled, make myself included. I wouldn't be as tech savvy as the rest of them. But yeah, that's one thing I would have recommended to do. Kind of computer classes, definitely need that if you're planning to go online or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I suppose, I suppose we're all hoping that things will go back to, to normality in September or, you know, it might be some kind of blended format where, you know, some of your lectures might be online and others will be on campus. So I suppose, look, it, it really just depends on the public health advice, really, in terms of what it's going to be like uh, next September. Um, we have a psychology question, so I might put it to you, Valerie. Um, one of our listeners wants to know uh, what career choices uh, would you have after studying the subject psychology? You might even mention what your what your own plans for that you you have in the coming year, Valerie, if you want to. Yeah, so psychology for your undergrad is quite general, and I mean, you really get a sense of what the subject is, and then you can decide if you do want to take it to a master's level, if you do want to take it further. So there's lots of different branches. There's like you could be an educational psychologist, so you could help out in primary schools. You could be a clinical psychologist, or you could do like therapy, kind of. There's so many options. I'm choosing to do health and social psychology because I was really interested in what I did for my UGD, my undergraduate dissertation. Um, so kind of looking at the differences between uh, people's values in terms of their behaviour in COVID and towards climate change and seeing if there's any kind of similarities there. So in my health and social psychology masters, I'll probably carry that on um, because I did find it quite interesting. Um, but like that, there's so many opportunities. Like I was really interested in forensic psychology, which is the study of criminals kind of. Um, like you could do cognitive psychology, you could look at the brain, you could do neuroscience. Like there are so many options and like there's so many YouTube videos you can look at if you do, if you are interested in anything like that, because people do like fantastic like vlogs or anything like that. Like that's how I really got to like enjoy and know more about what I wanted to do. 
Yeah, just some I suppose it, psychology really is a great subject, isn't it, Valerie? There's just a great number of options available uh, for you afterwards. Um, another question, um, I might get you to jump in, Scott, here uh, on this one. Um, this person wants to know, um, would you have any advice about meeting new people in the college in the beginning, I suppose, in first year, um, especially if you're trying to join maybe clubs and societies, um, you know, and it's also at the moment, I suppose, in the whole um, COVID environment at the moment where a lot of college life has moved online? I suppose my my main advice would be put yourself out there. Just don't be afraid. Um, because everyone at the end of the day is in the same boat, obviously with, with, with the situation at the minute, it's it's all a, a little bit up in the air. We don't know, we don't know really what's going to happen come 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 September. But look, if you just put yourself out there, there everybody's in the same position. Everybody everybody wants to do well, everybody wants to make friends. Um I really feel that getting involved in clubs and societies, getting involved within sports, if you've if you've a flair for music, if you've got a flair for languages, get involved, find like-minded people, um, just be open-minded, be friendly, um, and honestly, you'll have you'll have no problems. Um, it's it's such a welcoming college, not only just by the students but by the by the staff by the lecturers, by everybody involved. Um, honestly, it takes it takes a little it um, it takes a little bit of time, of course, to um, to settle in and stuff. But everybody is the same, as I said. Um, everybody's in the same position. Everybody's all rowing in the same direction, to use a turn of phrase. And um, yeah, that'd be my advice. Just put yourself out there, get involved in everything, and really embrace college life because. If you if you're sitting here like me after four years of college, you you I'd only love to do it all again. <laughs> yeah, I think wouldn't we all, uh, Scott, at this stage? Yeah, um, we have another one then, and uh, I'll put this one to you, Luke. Um, this person wants to know. Um, I suppose they want to know is how do you kill time between lectures? Um, so they're saying if they did a lecture at ten and the next one is at one, is there much to do? I suppose your lecturers would advise you that you should be going to the library and uh, doing a bit of study, but you might give us the inside track, Luke, on, on how you spend your time between lectures. Yeah, I, I was about to say the library, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say the real answer. Um, uh, students would normally go to like the lounge or places like that or the forum and kind of sit there or there's loads of places to go around the college. There's walks, there's different rooms you can go into and just kind of chill or go for a walk into town or whatever. It, there's really loads to do. You're just slap bang in the middle of Limerick. Like there's just so much around you and so much to see. Like it's just, there's, there's loads to do. You'll, you'll certainly find something to do. I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah. So look, I suppose, I'm sure uh, students, you'll have, no, you'll have no problem putting down the time. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, we had another question there. I might just answer myself. They're just wondering, I suppose, will it be online? next year for, for all students. Um, yeah, I suppose at the moment we're, we're just waiting to see what the public health advice is. You know, if it's safe, everyone will be on campus, but it could be some kind of mixture of uh, blended uh, some uh, learning. So some classes might be online and some might be on campus. That, that's kind of really the way it, it'll probably go, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, we might just uh, put a question again to, uh, to Scott there. Scott, just off air, we were talking. You were mentioning that on your off, you did the off-campus placement in in Turgia and that you went abroad. Um, you might just tell our listeners, maybe just explain what the off-campus placement is and, and what you did uh, in Turgia as part of it. Okay, so MIC offers um, an off-campus placement uh, for its BA degree in Turgia. Um, as I said before, the possibilities are endless, so you can go on placement. There's there's a wide variety of you can go into schools, you can go on placement. There's a wide variety of what you can what you can explore and what you can choose to do. Um, because I was studying German, um, I went to Germany, of course, for um, both semesters. Now you could have the option and we'll say you could mix and match so you could go on placement for your first semester and you could go abroad for your second or vice versa. Um, I chose to go for two semesters, so basically for the full academic year. 
Um, so I went to Augsburg. It's um, in Bavaria, in the south of Germany. Um, I chose Augsburg because um, I did a bit of research into the into the university. Um, it seemed fantastic. The city, it's the second oldest city in Germany. Um, it has a, a soccer team in the Bundesliga, so I, that was a massive selling point also. Um, and I also had a friend that was there a few years ago um, before I was, and uh, he just couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, so yeah, I went to Augsburg and I really feel that while I got a fantastic grounding and foundation in what I had learned in MIC for the first two years of my undergrad, nothing beats being immersed in, in a language, nothing beats actually being there. And it could be something as simple as just getting on a bus in the morning and hearing German, um, hearing the, your target language, using it in a shop, stuff like that, just the simple stuff. Um, and it doesn't even have to be in a lecture hall or in a classroom. It's just you're out. You're, it's, it's going through your head all day. And I really feel that coming back then from my final year in, in, in MIC, albeit online, that it was a massive advantage for me and for the rest of the guys that in, in our class that went um, that went abroad. I really feel that it was a fantastic advantage to have in the class. It made it made speaking, conversing, um, just all aspects I, I feel were were kind of honed and sharpened um, while abroad. And it was an it was it was a really amazing experience. I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. It was it was a it was a it was a great experience. Yeah, just to pick up on, on a point there, uh, Scott. I presume that was your first time abroad. Like, was it, or living abroad? Was that very daunting? And what would you say, maybe, to someone who's who might be starting the arts degree, maybe in the next year or two? You know, you wouldn't let that put them off going abroad on their placement, would you? No, one hundred percent not. One hundred percent. Like anything, there's going to be a cultural shock. Even even moving from Mitchellstown to Limerick, there was there was a small bit of a cultural shock. <laughs> um, so you could imagine the cultural shock when you move from from Limerick to to Germany. Um, it really does take a little bit of time. It's just getting getting used to the new to the new lifestyle. Um, you're kind of losing your home comforts, but at the same time, you're picking up lots of new things. For me, the Irish food was a big miss. Of course, your family, um, of course, your friends. Um, I was very lucky in the fact that I was able to go over with one of my friends that was also studying Germany, or Germany, sorry, German, um, that was also studying German. So it was that was a massive support to fall back on as well. And we've got we've got really had the same the same interests and so on. So that was a real that was a real support for me personally. Um, but you, you, you really do meet lots of new people. So like, and it's not just German you're learning. You're meeting new people from like, I met people from Finland, from China, from the Netherlands, from France. And you, you're really creating it just a big network of friends, which, which is absolutely unbelievable. It's great. And it's a fantastic experience. And it does take a little bit of time to settle in. But once you settle in, it is the best experience you'll ever have. Yeah, great. Thanks, uh, Scott. I might get Valerie, I might get you to, to jump in there, Valerie, maybe just tell us a little bit about your own off-campus placement uh, experience, like what did you do and um, where did you go? Yeah, so for psychology, because it is um, regulated by the PSI, we only did get one semester of placement because we have to cover all the intended modules. Um, so I got to go to Long Beach, which is just outside of LA in California. Um, so I just went there for the one semester. And like Scott said, I mean, even though they do speak English there and the culture probably isn't extremely different to Ireland, it still is such a culture shock when you go over, like even seeing the sun every day, like, you know, putting factor 50 on because I'm so pale, like it was mad. But it was unbelievable because I lived so close to Mary I, um, so like the opportunity to go literally as far away as possible from Limerick was amazing and then get to come back and get to use 
everything I learned like academically like because they do learn a lot different over there so it was fab to be able to come back and apply that into college in Ireland um, and like Scott I was lucky enough to go over it with three other girls from RAI so I wasn't alone it was a nice safety blanket to fall back on but we did meet loads of new people over there from all different countries like there was so many people from Korea which like I there's not a lot of people from Korea in Limerick so it was fab to like really get to know them and to get to know the culture because it is so different um, and I was able to study kind of whatever modules that I wanted so I really got to do a lot of like women in film those kind of things race in Hollywood so I loved the opportunity to be able to go over and like that like Mary I we're very lucky that we do have that placement because a lot of colleges don't so yeah yeah, thanks, Father. Sounds like a, a fantastic experience. And uh, as you said, I suppose not many other arts degrees have that off campus placement in Turgeon. So I suppose it is a unique opportunity to get whether it's travel experience or, or work experience and get something on your CV that will stand to you when you go looking for jobs in the future as well. Um, and we're nearly out of time. So, Luke, we might finish with you. You might, Luke, you're in second year. So you might tell us, have you uh, your off-campus placement plan sorted for next year or what are you planning to do? Yeah, I, I have plans to go to a Wales school um, in Cork, so hopefully that all goes to plan. But um, when planning for the, the placement, the placement office is always so good to kind of help you obtain the placement and everyone on the staff is always really great just to give you ideas and send you emails about different interviews coming up and the off-campus place and seminars are always great. So students will see that in second year if they decide to go with Mary I. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. I'm glad you brought it up, Luke, that you know, you're not just left out there on your own. You have the, um, the placement office there to help uh, organize all this for you. So, you know, you're not just falling back in your own resources. Um, time is, uh, is up, so look, I'd just like to thank Scott, Valerie and Luke. I think you've been great. You've given a huge amount of information there, not only about the, about the, pro, about the Bachelor of Arts, but also about your own um, MIC student experience as well. So, you know, there's plenty of advice there for prospective students. So look, I'd just like to thank you all again for uh, giving us all your thoughts. Um, our next session will be at um, uh, it'll be at 11 a.m. and uh, hopefully then we'll be talking to students on uh, English language and literature, geography and Gwilke. So look, thanks for joining us and thanks very much to our uh, three guests today and um, you know lots of information there. This will all this is recorded today and it'll be available on uh, the MIC website www.mic forward slash at CEO in the next couple of days. So uh, that brings this session to a close. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us.